Rocky and Bullwinkle, and much of the Jay Ward Library. I know, it's weird to think that the original fairy tale factory ever owned fractured fairy tales, right? Well, they didn't exactly own them, but not for a lack of trying. No, Bullwinkle didn't appear in Roger Rabbit. He was name dropped in the source material, but didn't actually appear in the story. The mouse and the moose have a more complicated history than that. In 1989, Disney acquired the home video rights to Rocky and His Friends and The Bullwinkle Show. And in 1991, Buena Vista Home Entertainment put out a series of VHS collections of segments from the shows. And we all know Disney never strikes a distribution deal without at least considering a full takeover. Reportedly, Disney even wanted to have a Rocky and Bullwinkle presence in MGM Studios, but Universal swooped in with a better theme park rights deal. And in part thanks to the revitalization of the property from the Disney home video releases, Moose and Squirrel got their own live show on both coasts in Universal Parks. Disney tried to strike back by tasking Tad Stone and Michael Peraza with developing a new Rocky and Bullwinkle TV series, but only once the pitch was put together did Disney realize that they only owned distribution rights, not full character rights. When you're Disney, it's kinda hard to keep track of what you own, isn't it? So that pitch got reworked to Darkwing Duck, and... Any turn of events that leads to the creation of Darkwing Duck can't be all bad. So Disney never produced a new Bullwinkle product, but the VHS release still counts as a Disney product that Bullwinkle was in. The only Jay Ward show Disney was able to hold on to the rights to was George of the Jungle, so they turned it into the best received and most fondly remembered live action Jay Ward movie, to the point where Universal's first attempt at a live action Jay Ward movie seemed to be built entirely around its success. Like, once again, they had Brendan Fraser being trained by a former python, and the movie even marketed itself as from the creator of George of the Jungle. I mean, the movie's not from the creator of the movie, but the character's from the creator of the character, so that's only slightly misleading. Universal soon after released the live-action Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, but Disney, not to be one-upped, clung desperately onto their George of the Jungle movie rights to make a direct-to-video sequel. Later, J. Ward Productions teamed up with Classic Media to form Bullwinkle Studios, which handled distribution for the classic shows from then on, and produced a new George of the Jungle cartoon, which was targeted more towards audiences familiar with the Disney movie, but without any actual involvement from Disney. But then Classic Media was acquired by DreamWorks Animation, which of course is now owned by Universal, and so that show and the original are now part of the Universal Library. But before Universal's acquisition of DreamWorks Animation, there was a period where their distribution was handled by 20th Century Fox, which of course is now owned by Disney. At the same time, DreamWorks live action movies were distributed by Touchstone, which was already owned by Disney. Katzenberg's whole anti-Disney kick really paid off for him, didn't it? Anyway, during that Fox deal, DreamWorks produced a Peabody and Sherman movie and a Rocky and Bullwinkle short that was supposed to play with that movie in theaters, but instead we got an extended promo for Home. And as a result, I am still to this day bitter against the very existence of the movie Home. The Bullwinkle short was eventually released as a bonus feature on the 3D Blu-ray of Mr. Peabody and Sherman, so as DreamWorks projects that are also pieces of Fox distribution, the movie and the short might be in both the Disney and Universal library. You'd think having like four companies own everything would make this stuff less confusing. 